Hello and welcome to more One Life to Live. I'm your host, Leslie Miller, coming to you every Friday from the soundstage of One Life to Live. Today, I'm on my way to the Lord Library. This is the set of the Lord Library, and right here is where all the action happens. The cat fights, the blackmail, even the steamy scenes once in a while. More One Life to Live is your show. We will take you behind the scenes and all over the studio in a whole new way. You'll meet the actors, the producers, comfortable sofa, and everyone who brings this soap to life. And you won't just see them, you'll get to talk to them yourselves on Skype, Twitter, Facebook. More One Life to Live is completely interactive, and we want to hear from you. Ready to rock it into the future? So are we. But first, a little blast from the past as six-time Emmy winner Erica Slezak catches you up on life and love in Landview. Life in Landview was always full of surprises. I intend to fight you with every means available. I accepted a long time ago that I murdered my father. Except you didn't. I did. You were arrested for Eddie Ford's murder. That's right. I promise I will not take any more chances. Will you marry me? <laughs> to join my pa, Bo Buchanan, and his lovely ex-wife, Nora Hannon Gannon Buchanan, Hannon Buchanan Buchanan. If you're thinking Coulson, you're wrong. John and my daughter Natalie, they were star-crossed lovers. Liam is your son. David, with his very unique style, brought us love and laughs and his magnificent obsession with his movie career. The boy with the chipmunk tattoo bombed. And then there were the trials and tribulations that our young people faced. Victor is my father. How many times do I have to tell you? Let me put it to you this way. Neither Todd nor Victor want you hurt. Not to mention good-natured lies and deceit. And then you lied about being pregnant so he would be out of the way and you could sleep with Christian Vega. <gasps> I found a woman who is so rich, she's got her own island. And it'll be the easiest mark we've ever hit. Todd and Blair. Accept secrets from the past. <gasps> Threaten to destroy them yeah. and their children. You were worried that when those kids found out you weren't really their father, they wouldn't love you anymore. And then there was the secret from the past that changed everything. You are my son, my beloved Victor. And you are Todd. Todd and Victor became locked in a sibling rivalry that led to deadly consequences. Todd Manning, you're under arrest for the murder of Victor Lord Jr. We all thought this was the end of the story. Who says you only have one life to live? And here she is in person, Erica Slezak, along with Robert Gorey and One Life to Live's executive producer, Jennifer Pepperman, getting ready to talk to us and also to you in just a minute. But first, let's check out the best moments from this week's One Life to Live. My day could not be better, my darling. Could not be better. See you later, Mom. Hey, what, what is going on here? You hold on. Oxy. That's what this is. So I want all of you guys to go out, tell your uh, friends, tell your neighbors that if they want to get hot, they got to seek shelter. Finally, face to face. Finally, it's nice to meet you, boss. That's quite a headline. Yeah, well, that's quite a story, thanks to you. You're gonna regret printing those lies about me. I'll be exonerated, and I will bring you down. Our daughter's on drugs. No, no, absolutely not, that's impossible. She was taking Oxy. How much? I don't know, I took her stash. She must have had more. Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? Oh, Don't ever go near my family again. Understand? Now, according to the banner online, you called the American public, and I quote, a bunch of idiots who can't be trusted to spell their own names right. 
You know your father and I love you, right? Yeah. Matthew. Yes. A part of that love is being scared for your kid. You know? You'll understand that with Drew. The key you are going to pay. So it's only been four episodes, and we've already got a political scandal, a drug overdose, a very modern marriage, and a guy back from the dead. Erica Slezak, our grand dam of Landview, Victoria, and also the woman who's won more daytime Emmys than any other, Robert Gorey, our new Matthew, and executive producer Jennifer Peppermint are here now to tell us what more could possibly happen next. <laughs> oh, Erica, I want to start with you. Sure. How does it feel to be playing Vicky again, and did you ever think this would happen? It feels wonderful to be playing Vicky again because I miss her, and I love this lady. I think she's a wonderful character with all her ups and downs and everything. I did think it would happen again because after we shut down at ABC, I had a very nice phone call from one of my bosses, who's, current bosses, who said, we're going to keep trying, we're going to get this on. And I kind of believed him. And even though a year went by, I was so happy when I got the call that they were coming back. And they said, would you be interested? And I went, are you kidding? <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's it's wonderful to be back. And it feels like no time has gone by, like it was a long weekend. Although your <laughs> nephew is all grown up, Matthew's all grown up. He's I, all I grown know. up and yeah. cute as a button. Oh. Robert, Thank how you. has Matthew changed since we last saw him? <sighs> well, uh, he's grown up quite a bit. Um, <laughs> he's becoming an adult. He's moving out of the nest and getting his own place. Um, sort of trying to balance that relationship between his parents and his friends. You know what? how much to divulge and how much to keep to himself. How is it for you as an actor, Robert, to be joining uh, such an esteemed cast uh, and, and the Erica Slays act? Oh, stop. Uh, well, <laughs> I got to tell you, I, I am honored uh, to be part of such a wonderful cast, an amazing show. Um, you know, I was a little nervous, obviously, coming on board. Uh, definitely, you know, stepping into a role that fans have, have gotten used to one character playing for quite some time. Um, but starting with day one, everybody welcomed me in and uh, just, I'm, you know. I'm going to interrupt and say you fit in as if you had always been there. Thank you. And you I were feel that like it too. comfortable Thank from you. day one. Thank you. And there was no hesitation. It was as if he'd been there for years. This kid here, this is really someone, this, I shouldn't call him a kid because now he's grown up. He's really someone to watch. Uh, I think uh, his Matthew is going to be really exciting and mm -hmm. a lot of people are going to really be able to connect with Matthew and uh, his story. Robert, Thanks, you're Jen. blushing because that's a huge, compliment, it's a huge compliment from the executive producer. Yeah. So, Jen, it's I guess... one to watch, I'm telling you. Thank you. Needless to you. say, the chemistry between the new cast members and the existing cast members is pretty incredible. It is pretty incredible. I mean, we have so many returning cast members we're so lucky to have that are so amazing. And we have some new cast members, and uh, they really mesh together well. Mm -hmm. And our kids on the show, as I call them, Matthew, Jeffrey, Danny, and Destiny, are exciting. I have a little secret name for them when they come to set. It's called, they're called the A-Team. The fans for many years have loved to watch the rivalry between Vicky oh. and Dorian. Erica, are they ever going to call a truce? What oh, are we my gonna God, say? I hope not. <laughs> I hope not. We started here day one. And that's, that's where it started. Dorian came marching in and said, rah, 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 and it was, it was wonderful. Because when she left the show last time, we left on a very nice note. She was going off to become a senator. Who, on God's name, would make her a senator? But somebody <laughs> did. Um, and and we, we ended on, we parted on a very nice, warm, friendly note. And I thought, eh, this isn't going to last. And it didn't, thank goodness. Because working with Robin again is brilliant. Brilliant. You two have such a dynamic on screen together. I've always said it's the strongest relationship on the show, in, in spite of all the other relationships, because these two women have been at each other from day one, and they don't really know why. And another relationship is yours, Matthew, with Danny. How does Matthew feel about Danny? Are we going to find out? Well, they go back quite some years. Uh, they're really good friends, best friends, I would say. So, I mean, there's definitely some tension living under the same roof. Uh, I know that, you know, Matthew had some strong feelings for her in the past, and we'll see where it goes in the future. Jim, what can you reveal? 
Uh, I don't want to reveal too much, but uh, the fans are going to love seeing Matthew and Danny together. And uh, I will say, coming up, something quite unexpected happens, uh, which... Uh, which you can't reveal. I can't reveal. I can't reveal. <laughs> but something unexpected, ha unexpected happens between these two people that everyone is going to say, whoa, including, okay. including Matthew and Danny. You'll keep us watching. All right, you've heard my questions for Jennifer, Erica, and Robert, but I bet you've got some of your own. It's your turn to ask them after the break. And things are getting hot and heavy in Landview. We'll show you the hottest new bathing suits for looking great on the beach or by the landfair pool when we come back. the best parts about being behind the scenes is we get to take you behind the scenes. Every week we'll share a different scoop about how One Life to Live comes together. Today, step behind the velvet rope with the cast and crew as they seek shelter at Landview's hottest new nightclub. Obviously, it's great to see your family again and it's great to have that history of One Life kind of coming back alive. Welcome. To reintroduce some old characters and introduce some new characters. Snoop Lions on set. We're on the set of One Life to Live, uh, cameoing, you know, playing myself. And we got about 60, 70 extras here, along with staff, bartenders, and all that stuff. So it's going to be a very, very busy day. And chill out in those chairs. I know where you're. We get a more prime time look rather than the image that people imagine in their minds when they think soap operas. But the fact that we have this opportunity to be cutting edge and do something different, I think that's what I'm most excited about. One Life to Live is a very important show to me, and um, I wanted to be a part of it in every facet. There's some classic stuff, there's some new stuff. We're going to get back to work here. Uh, thanks for coming, and uh, see you later. So how about you join in the fun? Got a question for Erica, Jennifer, or Robert? We'll answer them. Now on Skype, our first question is from Glinda in Rochester, Michigan. Hi, Glinda. First of all, how long have you been a loyal fan of One Life many, to Live? Many years. I am so excited. One Life to Live is coming mm -hmm. back. Um, the show has been with me through the births of my daughters, and... Now one of them's getting married, so I'm wow. just so excited about this. Well, how That's excited it. are you to be able to talk directly to Erica Slazak <laughs> and ask her your question? Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty uh, amazing to me. I'm so excited. Well, she is I'm right here. Know. What's your question for Erica? So my question is, Clint um, had proposed to Vicki, and I was curious what's going to happen with that. Okay, um, let me catch you up. And that right now we are together. I'm wearing a stunning engagement ring. And I'm going to tell you right now that I don't think it's going to last. Because Clint is probably going to be up to his no goodness again. Um, but right now we're kind of happy. And things are going well. And he's lost that ankle bracelet. For some reason, Taya got him out of jail, which is good. So he doesn't, he's not confined to the house anymore. Um, but we are very happy for now. But just in the tradition of daytime, I doubt that it's going to last. Oh, I know. Thank Sad. You. Really? I know. How's that for an answer, Glinda? <laughs> Is that what you wanted to hear? Um, well, you know what? There's always mysteries on soap operas, so it's, it's just... One life to live, right? It is. And, you know, it, just because it doesn't last right now, and I'm not saying it won't, I'm just saying stay tuned, um, Vicky and Clint have gotten back together again, what, 12, 14, 16 times? So there's, n there's no end in sight. Glinda, thank you so much for joining us today from Rochester, Michigan. And keep the questions coming. We want to hear from you again. We have another viewer question. This one is for Robert. What happened to the love that Matthew had for Destiny? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, I would say that uh, Matthew and, and Destiny have always shared a, a bond with one another, uh, a deep friendship. Um, they share a child, baby Drew. You know, who's to say what will happen down the line? Um, but, uh, you know, there's always a love of, of friendship and they, they go way back. You know, I've been able to trust her with a lot of my, my secrets and uh, we've shared a lot. So 
I guess stay tuned. I think Matthew and Destiny's relationship is complicated, and I think that's okay. Um, and they definitely are going to go through a little journey. I don't want to reveal anything, but um, I think we've also, also with this story, uh, are trying to tell some very realistic things, which sometimes uh, when, you know, people have a baby or are not married, it's a complicated story. And, and, they're, and they weren't ready for it. They weren't ready for it. They weren't really ready. Destiny had a real debate within mm -hmm. herself as to whether or not to keep the baby. So, and Matthew's and struggling Matthew with that had, as well. Matthew had no part in that decision because he was in a coma. It, it seems like Matthew's ignoring baby Drew. Is that the case? I think he's struggling with uh, being a father and uh, what he's supposed to do and what everybody wants him to do. And I think Matthew is really trying to find his way through the story. Erica, I, I want to ask you, you were actually a recast Vicky back in 1971. So you're sitting here with Robert Gorey, mm -hmm. who is the new Matthew. What advice do you have for him here? It was a little different um, for Robert. He has the advantage in that they've aged Matthew up. And so he wasn't picking up from 17. He's picking up from 20. I'm sure, I'm assuming you're 21. 21. You're 21. Yeah. You go to the He's nightclub and you yeah. drink, so you have to be 21. <laughs> Um, I replaced uh, a woman literally from Tuesday to Wednesday and just stepped into the character. I, I had the good fortune not to have watched the show because I had been out of town and I didn't know much about it. And as a result, I was just able to bring to it what they wanted from me and when they cast me. And I slowly learned the history of the character, but my day, day one, I didn't even know who she was. I didn't know how rich she was or how crazy she was or anything. Um, you have the advantage of knowing the history of Matthew, but of having three or four years of age in between the other actor and you to grow up and to to do what you do best. Exactly. Did to you, a certain extent, it gives you a little bit of a free, freedom yes. as an actor, you know, yes. make your own choices. and That he's grown up over four years, yeah. and this is who he has become. Did you feel pressure coming into this role? Um, only self-imposed pressure. <laughs> you know, Always to, the way, right? To, to Never came well. from anyone else. No, not, no, no, no. Jen, Robert is part of the fresh new look of One Life to Live. Talk about how the show has changed from the last time we saw it. We have new sets. This is, of course, one of our new sets. Um, you know, we're, we're shooting the show a little bit, a little bit differently. Uh, we want it to feel uh, a little bit more uh, fast-paced, and we want it to feel not so proscenium, like uh, the audience is out there watching. We want the audience really to feel like they're a part of the show. And one of our, our sets, Shelter, which is a nightclub, that set was really designed so that when you were watching it, you sort of felt like you were in Shelter. Is there a difference uh, to how the show feels shooting it this time, Erica? No, oddly enough, not at all. For us, uh, 40 years, I was in a set, I had a camera, I had, um, you know, stage managers and props. The only difference is how the content is being delivered. But fortunately, we're very comfortable with this system that's the same as it was before. It's just the, di the delivery that's different. Well, I want to thank you, Erica, Robert, and Jennifer, for stopping by today. The action is really heating up in Landview, and you know what that means. It is time for the clothes to come off and the bathing suits to slide <laughs> on. <laughs> Lucky Magazine previews how you too can look like a soap star this summer. That's coming up next. Remember when David offered to whisk Dorian away to someplace tropical and Dorian declined? Probably because she didn't have a thing to wear. To make sure you don't end up in the same boat when your Mr. Tall, Dark and Handsome invites you to hit the beach, we've got Lucky Magazine's Lori Bergamotto here to tell us which bathing suits are blazing hot this season and which <laughs> ones are toast. Welcome, Lori. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. It's great to have you here. We are heading into that time of year. We have a variety of bathing suit types, so let's get started. Who do we have first? Yes. Yeah, so we're going to start with the ruffles and feminine. We're going to bring out Sabrina. Now, we loved the tiered ruffles on this suit. This is from Juicy Couture. It's available at Macy's. It's around $165. And it just, it's perfect for a woman who wants to accentuate her top because it makes everything look a little bit more voluminous up top. Really cute, very fun, laid back beach look. We gave her a fedora and a straw bag to accessorize it's with. It's also really feminine with the ruffles. Yes. 
It's super girly, and it's a really big trend that we saw on clothes all season that has now trans, you know, made its way over to the swimsuit world. But next up, we have something that's a little bit more adventurous. This is the tribal print. So this is our model, Christy, and she's in an O'Neill bikini. So this is about $82. And what we love about this tribal print is though we've seen it before, you know, this is something the global tribal print has been around before. What's new about it for right now is the colors. So there's are neon colors in there. It gives it really a very summer, feeling and we also love the neckline of the top of the bikini instead of just being like a triangle bikini it does have that sort of v in the middle which also that silhouette lends itself to very tribal silhouette we shouldn't be afraid of prints is that no, right do not be afraid of prints especially when they're in colors like this they can be surprisingly forgiving on any woman's body next up is sporty so this is on our model rashida Again, with the bright colors, this is a huge trend we're seeing, color blocking. And because it's piped in that dark black, it really gives it that athletic feel. This is from Shokahachi. It's available at shopbop.com. And it's around $150. She looks super sporty. It's something that you can definitely play some beach volleyball in, you can run in. And it's really just a fun bathing suit you can move in, which is really important. I was just going to say, it looks like a comfortable bathing suit. It is, You're not it worrying is. about certain areas coming out. Yeah, no, no wardrobe malfunctions in this bathing suit. This, every summer we see this on clothing and we're thrilled that it's finally made its way to bathing suits. So this is a Hurley bathing suit. This is available on Hurley.com. And what we love about this are the panels on the outside. Now, because of those panels, our model Alexa looks even slimmer than she actually is. The stripes are just down the middle but the panels sort of suck her in a little bit and they create an optical illusion that draws your eye right to the center and creates a perfect figure. I always thought in fashion that you should stay away from the horizontal stripes if you're body conscious at all, but on, on this particular bathing suit with the panels on the side, it's really flattering. But from a one piece, we go to the last trend, which is on a two piece, the tropical trend. So this is on our model April. Now, florals have been really big. A paradise print has been really big. But for swim, it's all about melding the two in a tropical print. This bathing suit is super affordable, $31 at H&M. And what we did with this one is we just threw a chambray shirt. Many women have this. This one's available at JCPenney. It makes an adorable cover-up. Again, it's all about that effortless, just beachy and beautiful. You're on trend, but you're still supported and you look great. Thank you so much, Lori. Thank you. And thank you to our models. You all look beautiful and the suits are incredible. Thank you so much. Now time to turn the spotlight off our models and turn it back on to you. Find out how you can become a part of more One Life to Live right after the break. be a one life to live without you and there can't be a more one life to live without you either to tell us what you want to see in the weeks to come email us at more oltl at the online network.com connect with us on facebook and twitter and don't miss a single second of our exclusive behind the scenes action here on more one life to live every friday and more all my children too we'll see you next week Just see.